this section, we will learn about pacemaker rhythms. These are ECG manifestations of either a temporary or permanent pacemaker on a patient requiring pacemaker support. Certain medical conditions requires the insertion of either a temporary or permanent pacemaker. Artificial pacemakers are indicated in the following conditions in sinoatrial dysfunction, such as with symptomatic sinus bradycardia or sinus arrest, as well as sinus exit block, or in atrial flutter or atrial fibrillation wherein the ventricular response is either slow or not tolerated, or also in sick sinus syndrome or conditions known as chronotropic incompetence. It is also indicated in the event that a patient develops AV block, such as second degree AV block type 2, and a complete heart block or third degree heart block. And lastly, pacemakers are also indicated in the event that patients experience hypersensitive carotid signs. Whenever we're talking about a pacemaker, there's always going to be a pulse generator. This is the source of the power or the energy source wherein an electrical energy can be initiated. It consists of a battery and a lead connector. In addition to that, there has got to be a pacing leads, and pacing leads are the ones that delivers the electrical current to the cardiac muscles. And they could either be a unipolar pacing lead or a bipolar pacing lead. Pacemakers could also be classified as a fixed rate or asynchronous pacemaker. This is when the pacemaker fires constantly, and this actually is uncommon today. It might be relevant in an emergency. The more common one is what's known as a demand or a synchronous pacemaker. This is one that paces only when the heart fails. And it is designed with a sensing mechanism that determines when the pacemaker is needed to fire. When the heart has a spontaneous heartbeat, the pacemaker will not fire. And therefore, it will inhibit the discharge. And this is what is known as a demand or a synchronous pacemaker. Pacemakers could also be classified according to which area of the heart is being stimulated. It's either the atria or the ventricles or both. So in a single chamber pacemaker, the electrical energy is going to be applied in only one chamber, either the atrial or the ventricular. In the case of an atrial pacemaker, if it senses a P wave, then it does not fire. However, if it does not sense a P wave, then it will obviously discharge an electrical energy energy. Similarly, a pacemaker could also be a single chamber located in the ventricle. And in the event of a QRS complex being sensed by the pacemaker, the pacemaker will not fire. However, if it does not sense a QRS, then it will fire. There's also what is known as a dual chamber pacemaker. In other words, the active electrical activities are both directed at the atria and the ventricles. It uses two leads, one in the atrium and one in the ventricle. This can sense and pace in both chambers. If there's no P wave, the atrial lead fires, then waits to stimulate a, an electrical PR interval relaying it to the ventricles. This mimics the normal conduction of electrical impulse from the AV node all the way into the ventricles. The following are examples of pacemaker-initiated beats. The first one is a pacing spike followed by a P wave. This is an example of an atrial pacemaker. It is a single chamber pacemaker, and the pacing lead and the sensing leads are in the atrium. The second one is a pacing spike followed by a QRS complex. This, again, is a single chamber pacemaker, and the electrical impulse is in the ventricle. The next one is the pacing spike followed by a P wave and another pacing spike followed by a QRS complex. This indicates that both the atria and the ventricles are being stimulated. This is what is known as a dual pacemaker or a dual chamber pacemaker, also known as an AV sequential pacemaker. The distance between the atrial spike and the ventricular spike mimics the normal PR interval. Let's discuss some terms terms referring to pacemaker activity. The first one is the automatic interval or the pacing interval.
This interval refers to the heart rate at which the pacemaker is set. This interval is measured from one pacing spike to the next consecutive pacing spike. Let's illustrate this particular example. We have a ventricular pacemaker, and the reason why I know it's a ventricular pacemaker is because the spikes are followed by a QRS complex. In order to determine the automatic interval or the pacing interval, put your caliper from one pacing spike to the next pacing spike. And if we take a look at this example, there is 5, 10, 15, 20 little boxes that encompasses from one pacing spike to the next. Let's measure it again. From one pacing spike to the next pacing spike. Okay, and we have 5, 10, 15, 20 boxes. 20 small boxes is equal to 75. The pacing interval is 75 beats per minute. What does this mean? This means to say that the pacemaker is programmed to fire at 75 beats per minute. And so in this example, we notice that the pacemaker is firing, it's firing, it's firing. And then there is a intrinsic or natural beat. This is what's called an intrinsic or natural be and it will not fire because it respects the presence of that QRS complex. However, following this intrinsic or natural beat, there is now going to be again an absence of another natural beat within that 75 heart rate and thus the pacemaker initiates again. So as you could see, the heart rate will never be less than 75 beats per minute. This is what is known as the automatic interval rate. Another term important in understanding pacemaker rhythms is the concept of sensing. Sensing is the ability of the pacemaker to be able to detect natural or intrinsic electrical impulses or either electrical impulses that are produced by a pacemaker. What does this mean? If it detects an inherent beat or a natural beat, it inhibits itself from delivering a stimuli. However, if the pacemaker does not detect an electrical activity, it is then triggered to initiate or produce an electrical stimulus. This is the concept of sensing. Take a look at the example right over here. If you see there is a pacemaker activity, another pacemaker activity, and the third one is an intrinsic beat. And this intrinsic beat or a natural beat is therefore detected by the pacemaker. Sensing that there is a natural beat, the pacemaker inhibits from triggering because it's not necessary. This is the concept of sensing. In this example, the pacemaker is firing, it fires, it fires again, and because there's a natural beat over here, it's not going to fire. So it inhibits itself. However, because there's no more impulse or natural impulse within this span of time, then and the pacemaker again senses the fact that there is no natural impulse occurring, it again resumes firing. This is an illustration of the concept of sensing. Another pacemaker term is capture. Capture means to say that there is a successful stimulation of the myocardium by a pacemaker stimulus resulting in depolarization. So it results in a cardiac activity resulting from the electrical stimuli. Let's focus our attention to the right hand side of the screen. In here, we see that there is a pacing spike resulting in a QRS complex. The fact that there is an electrical stimuli which results in a depolarization wave in here, the QRS complex, that means to say that there has been a successful capture. On this particular spike right here, we notice that it's not followed by any waveform, which means to say that there is an electrical impulse that was generated by the pacemaker, but it does does not result in any depolarization wave at all. Therefore, this is what is known as loss of capture. The one that results in a depolarization wave, like for example this one, there is going to be a successful depolarization and therefore this is termed capture.
In this example, we have a ventricular pacemaker because there's a pacing spike followed by a QRS complex. Each of the spikes were successful in producing a depolarization wave as manifested by the QRS complex, and therefore this illustrates a fully functioning pacemaker with 100% capture. Capture, again, meaning to say that the electrical stimuli that was produced by the pacemaker was successful in causing a wave of depolarization. The next term is intrinsic B, also known as a native B. These are spontaneous ECG beats that are produced by the patient's natural electrical system. So if we were to look at this, this is a pace beat. The reason why I say it's a pace beat is because there's a spike followed by a QRS complex. And then there's another spike followed by a QRS complex. So these two beats are called pace beats. Contrast that now to these narrow QRS complexes, which reflects a natural or intrinsic beat. So that's the difference between a pace beat and an intrinsic beat. There's also a term called fusion beat. A fusion beat occurs when the pacemaker fires at the same time that the patient's own electrical system fires an electrical stimuli. This results in part of the uh, ventricles being depolarized by the pacemaker and part of it will be from the patient's own intrinsic impulse. So how do you identify a fusion beat? The fusion beat is going to be observed on the ECG when a pacemaker spike occurs at the prog programmed rate or the, the spike occurs as scheduled and then it's followed by a QRS that will be different in its configuration from the pace beats and the patient's natural or intrinsic beat. In this example, we have two pace beats and it is followed by intrinsic beat, an intrinsic beat. And notice that this particular beat is a combination of the morphology or the characteristic of the intrinsic or natural beat and also the pace beat. So this is a combination and therefore we would call it a fusion. Beat. This example illustrates another occurrence of a fusion beat. Notice that the first two QRS complexes are preceded by a pacing spike. So these two are pace beats. The third one looks different, but it is preceded also by a pacing spike. And the characteristic of this beat looks like uh, similar to the intrinsic or natural beats. This is another example of a fusion beat. In monitoring the electrocardiogram of patients with pacemakers, it is expected that we monitor pacemaker malfunctions. Pacemaker malfunctions would include a failure to fire or a failure to initiate an electrical impulse when needed, failure to capture or to cause a response following the initiation of a, an electrical impulse by the pacemaker, or failure to sense the inappropriate firing of the pacemaker due to its inability to determine check or to sense the presence of intrinsic beats. Or it could also be the failure to initiate an electrical impulse in the absence of intrinsic beats. The first pacemaker malfunction that we will discuss is failure to fire or failure to output. This is a situation wherein the pacemaker does not discharge a stimulus to the myocardium and it is going to be observed or it will be manifested in the electrocardiogram by absence of a pacemaker spike where it is expected. Common causes of failure to fire are going to be 1. The pacemaker might be off 2. That batteries might be depleted 3. That there might be a disconnection on the system from the leads and also the pulse generator or it could be a fracture of a lead or lead insulation and lastly electromagnetic interference. In this example we see that there's a ventricular pacemaker. The first two beats were fully captured but then on on the third beat, there's no more firing of the pacemaker when it is supposed to, and therefore 
this is a failure to output. In this other example, we see that we have a ventricular pacemaker. And again, there is going to be a failure of the pacemaker to generate electrical impulses where it is needed. This is a failure to output. Problems of the pacemakers could be rectified by nurses if it is a temporary pacemaker. However, in the event that the pacemaker is a permanent pacemaker, then interrogation of the pacemaker and reprogramming of the pacemaker might be indicated. Another malfunction of the pacemaker is failure to capture. Failure to capture means to say that there is an electrical activity discharged by the pacemaker, but it does not result in any depolarization wave. In this example, we have a ventricular pacemaker, and the first two beats were successfully captured, but on the third and the fourth, as well as the succeeding beats without the QRS complex, there are pacing spikes that are not followed by a QRS complex. This, therefore, is a manifestation of failure to capture. In this example, we have a ventricular pacemaker, and where the arrow is pointing is a pacing spike that is not followed by a QRS complex. This is failure to capture. The last type of pacemaker malfunction that we will discuss is sensing failure, or failure to sense, and this could be either under sensing or over sensing. Sensing failure occurs when the pacemaker either does not sense either myocardial electrical activity or perhaps from the pacemaker over sensing the wrong signals. There are two reasons why there might be sensing failure. One is under sensing. Under sensing is the most common cause of sensing failure. In other words, the pacemaker fails to recognize or to detect myocardial electrical activity, either intrinsic or perhaps a pace B, and therefore it fires earlier than it should. The manifestation of under sensing is going to be a pacing spike that occurs earlier than expected. The causes and interventions for under sensing might be that the sensitivity is set too low. Therefore, the intervention would be to increase the sensitivity. The second reason might be that the pacing catheter is out of position or lying in an infarcted area. In order for the electrode to be able to successfully stimulate the myocardium, it is important that the tip of the electrode must be in contact with the endocardium in order to sense it appropriately. However, in the case of an infarction, there's going to be a failure to sense due to infarcted area does not have the ability to sense. A third reason might be that the pacemaker was set on a fixed rate mode. Therefore, the intervention would be to turn the sensitivity dial on the generator to synchronous or demand pacing. The second cause of sensing failure is over sensing. In here, the pacemaker is too sensitive meaning to say that it recognizes other waveforms such as large T waves or maybe P waves even, or even muscle movements. And this causes the pacemaker to fire later than it should. The manifestation of, of over-sensing on the electrocardiogram is a pace beat that occurs later than expected. The Let's analyze this trip. There is a pacemaker present and the spikes are followed by a QRS complex. This indicates that there is a ventricular pacemaker. In looking at the automatic interval rate of the pacemaker, we go from one pacing spike to the next pacing spike and determine its rate. And the rate of the pacemaker is set at 20, which is 75 beats per minute. There's good capture on the first three beats, followed by an intrinsic beat, which is sensed by the pacemaker and therefore withholds firing. This is a pacemaker that that is functioning well with good sensing and good capture. In here, we have a ventricular pacemaker. The pacing spike is followed by a QRS complex. The first three beats are inherent beats. And in this first beat over here, the first pace beat, it does not sense
demands the presence of an intrinsic beat. And therefore, this is a failure to sense. It is under-sensing, meaning to say that it's not detecting this QRS complex, which is an inherent beat. It occurs twice in this particular strip, and this is failure to sense. The pacemaker is set at 50 beats per minute. In this strip, we have a ventricular pacemaker. The pacing spikes are followed by a QRS complex. In determining the rate, this is the automatic interval rate. It's 22 boxes. It's 68. It's programmed to fire at 68 beats per minute. On the first two complexes, it appears that we have a pace beat, but in this spike, there is no depolarization wave following it, and therefore this is a failure to capture. It occurs again on here, and it also occurs over here. So we have frequent episodes of failure to capture. In this strip, we have the first four beats as paced ventricular beats, but then it's not followed by any more activity, resulting in a systole. This is a malfunction of the pacemaker, which is failure to output or failure to fire. In this strip, there are pacing spikes without any corresponding waveforms denoting depolarization. So this is asystole, secondary to failure to capture. This ends the discussion on pacemaker rhythms.